Hey, GearHeads, happy Friday. Uh, Friday, August 7th. That means it's time for This Week at Gear Report, the weekly show where hey, we... Hey, GearHeads, happy Friday. Whoa, hold on. Uh, Friday, August 7th. That means it's time for This Week at Gear Report, the weekly show where hey, we... <laughs> okay, that was kind of funny. I uh, forgot that YouTube window was open in the background. It started repeating what I was saying, and... Uh, that, that kind of threw me. So uh, sorry about that. I think everyone has gotten used to a certain level uh, or lack of confidence on the operation side here. So hopefully that didn't throw anyone too bad. Um, so right now it's just uh, Clover and I. Uh, uh, Clover, if you want to say hi real quick. Yeah, I can say hi real quick. I was uh, working on sharing. I'm going to share this out to a couple places and Appreciate him. See what happens. Yeah, it was kind of a late decision whether we were going to do this or not, uh, because it's been a weird week. I started the week down at uh, TJ's in Florida, and then made the long trek back up to North Carolina, and uh, everything's been kind of upside down for me since then. So trying to get back into a rhythm, and and I think that uh, that and uh, we made a big change this week that has uh, resulted in a whole lot more stuff being published so far and and a few things in the queue to be published soon so i wanted to talk about that kind of get back into the rhythm by having this this weekly show and it's good to see that uh oh well look at that i'm i'm looking in the chat we got people showing up already fud life in the house and also clover tech i don't even know how that works but but they're both here so that's awesome uh, Defense Dad, good to see you. And uh, oh, Buck is here. Gun loving Grandpa, Andrew Faulkner, G twenty three. Everyone, the the whole crew is here. That's awesome. All right, I'm not sure what this means. Microwave pork rinds. That was a post that you put up recently, wasn't it? Yeah, finally got them. Yeah, Amazon finally delivered them. Oh, about time. About okay. bloody time. Yeah, all right. Let me let me give an explanation for this one here. I didn't get a notice. All right. So I thought I created the meeting or the the show early enough that everyone would get a notice, uh, but apparently I didn't. Uh, it was about thirty four minutes before the show was set to start when I finally sat down at the computer and created it because I wasn't sure if we were going to do it or not. Uh, and then I made a late decision. You know what? Yes, yes, we are going to do this. So um, so there you go. It was We've talked about the whole time that as long as we're all kind of locked down, that we would definitely do this um, every Friday. And then, uh, you know, as, as the um, COVID stuff kind of, eased a bit we may ease out of doing the show every week and, and i was thinking maybe this was the week that we we didn't do one but but as it got closer to show time i thought you know what we got some really cool stuff that happened this week that i want to share with everyone and, and see what they think about it so uh so i went ahead and created uh this week's um show and scheduled it uh, apparently too close to the start time to get that notice out so i apologize for that uh, let's see. Uh, Defense dead. Just got back from the range. I'm jealous because uh, I don't make it to the range very often, uh, unfortunately, with all the stuff going on. Uh, embarrassing yourself at 25 yards with your carry guns. Pistol range was closed for maintenance. So interesting. Yeah. Um, I definitely say that your defensive handguns, you, you need to be pretty, pretty confident with. I mean, that, that's my opinion. So um, I, I have a feeling that you're going to, since you're here talking about it, that means uh, you, you're taking it as kind of a constructive, uh, okay, I need to practice. So, uh, you know, uh, so, so that's good. Oh, well, look at this. The long lost Stanley Orchard is uh, here listening, I guess. Um, and I can send him for I can uh, I can send out links for anyone who wants to join. We got uh, Mitch has joined us. Uh, Gun snob is here. Um, right there. What's up? You're up, Gun snob. Come on, you're always up. If you're here, that's it. 
Oh, and speaking of, if anyone wants to join, it looks like G23 is also looking for uh, some folks to hop on a stream tomorrow uh, to be a part of that panel. Uh, if you want to give us a hint on what it is about, uh, maybe that'll help us narrow down who might want to uh, be a part of that with you. In life, you can't choose how far or where you're going to shoot, so you practice where you practice, I guess. I would apply that also to um, not, not just where and what distance, but also what weather. Um, and I'm guilty of this. Uh, 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 Mitch, since you joined us, I'm going to put you on the spot. Do no. you go out and practice? Oh, you're on the spot, brother. It's okay. too late. It's already happened. Do you go out and practice when it's hot, when it's cold, when it's blowing rain sideways? You know, when when you're having um, when you're having stomach issues. I mean, do you let anything stop you? Or are you like, you know what? When it happens for real, it could be yeah. while I'm on the can. I gotta I gotta learn how to shoot while I'm shooting. You know. More recently, I would say I have not, but yeah. in my earlier days. I have done some pretty ridiculous things, not, not unsafe, just because I try and put in the whole what if. You always do your offhand shooting. You always do your shooting from retention, uh, kneeling, prone, sitting. Um, I've done under, under vehicles, out of vehicles, into vehicles. But I would very much like to get back into something like that, but I used to love to go to places where it was available. If it was raining, you could go shoot. If it yeah. was bad weather, go shoot because that's the stuff that trains you for the real world versus just yeah. you're, you're inside at a range, standing still 10 yards away, planking away going, man, I'm so awesome. I'm putting every shot on target. I must be the best shooter in the world. And <laughs> then something happens and you know, you miss every shot because you know, a bird craps on you while you're shooting and you didn't practice for that. So, yeah. You know, I had a guy tell me, um, what did he say? He, he had been like an army ranger or something and had been in combat in a few different places. And, uh, he, he was re like a retired, really high, whatever, whatever the highest enlisted army rank is. I can't remember. Um, I remember Sergeant the air force. But yes. That Sergeant one. major. Yep. Yes. That's what he was. And um, and he said, you know, it ain't like the movies where everyone's got their their uniforms all put together and all their gear on their belts and everything. He said, you know, when a battle happens, you, you don't choose when it's going to happen or how long it happens. Um, you know, half the time you guys are are having a blowout. You know, they uh, they're, they're they're in a foreign place and they got some bad water and they're having an explosion while they're shooting, you know, like pants around their ankles, squatting. And, Worst and, and possible shooting. scenario. <laughs> yeah. But, but it's what happens sometimes, I guess. Um, so you practice that at your age, right? Always. Always. That's what I yep. thought. No, I no, no pants what, and running gun. Yeah. I think that's exactly what the gun snob meant when he said, you know, 70, degrees sunny low oh. humidity so he can drop trial while he's shooting and so that, gives me a, that gives me a good idea so a few months back i had to replace our toilet and mm -hmm. so out behind one of the outbuildings here is the old toilet and so you never know when you may be doing your business and somebody breaks into your house right so i need yeah. i need to move that old toilet onto the range you should yeah 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 definitely it could happen. You got to be prepared. It could happen. Yeah. Yeah. We, we were just talking. You, you got your toilet AR ready. And what do you do? Well, if you don't practice, you're going to miss. Right? Yeah. Like you're, the shower pistol, right? Yep. Yep. Well, I've got a problem with missing. According to my wife, I've got a problem with missing the target in the bathroom anyway. So. <laughs> yeah. You're not set up to succeed right there, I guess. Yeah. You're going to have to train that bladder. All right. I think, um, you know, we typically wait for later in the show to go completely off the rails. I think we're going to have to um, have to get back on track here shortly. I appreciate all the interaction and everything, but I apologize. 
Um, 3 a.m. fire drill. You know, that's another good one. Uh, my son is wrapping up his stuff for, for his Eagle Scout rank. He's got less than two weeks. We were talking about this right before the show started. And uh, part of the things he's doing, we had a family meeting this morning. Like when I say this morning, it was 1130 by the time everyone was awake. You know, I get up early, but I'm the only one. So, uh, so we get everyone together and we talk about a variety of things. That's not one of them we talked about, but I think that is absolutely fantastic. And, you know, now, now that that's been mentioned, I think I'm going to have to do that pretty soon. I'm going to get up in the middle of the night quietly, make sure everyone's asleep and then make a racket and yeah, all right, fire drill and scream at them and, and try and shake them up and figure out if they know where to go and how to get out of the house and all that stuff. So I think that'll be good. I think that was a good idea. And I'm going to give Stanley credit for that. When I tell him, you know, here's what's happening when I'm yelling at him. Stanley said we need to do it. So I think that'll work. I have a toilet and a seat in one of my deer stands. Okay. All right. I think he's going to make it, by the way, as far as for, for the Eagle Scout stuff. Um, not too long ago, it looked like he wasn't going to make it, but he's pulling things together and, and he's got the momentum. He's got uh, like 13 days left. And I think he's going to need five or six more to have everything done. That gives him a week for anything that doesn't happen. So we, we shall see. What do we got? <laughs> a Cheerio in the toilet. Yeah, mine, mine are big enough. We don't have to worry about that kind of aiming. Well, I mean, he's about to turn 18, but his aim still isn't that great. Maybe that's something we should have worked on more. Active shooter drills with the sun. Yeah. I, I hate that we have to think about doing that with kids these days, but it makes sense. Oh, okay. Let's see here. What do we got? Set off a smoke alarm and have a camera recording. You know, that could be worthwhile. If I'm going to do it, I should set some cameras up. I think uh, lots, lots of uh, great ideas here. And I'm confused. I know TJ sent me a note a little while ago. It said he was almost home. He was going to be late. Now he's logged in, but I don't see him. So I don't know if the house is crazy, if he's not going to make it or what. But uh, why don't we go ahead and dive in. Mitch, did you see the big change that we implemented this week? Pop quiz yeah. time. Yes, I did see the big change and uh, was very uh, radically surprised at the bombardment of articles. It was pretty cool. No joke. TJ has turned into an, a, uh, a review machine. It was, it's been kind of scary, honestly, how he's just gone nuts with putting out these. It's, uh, it's amazing. It's amazing what happens when you lower the barrier of entry for the lazy people, right? Efficient people. Oh, is that what it is? Efficient people? Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. it is. That is absolutely what it is. It, we, we're not going to talk lazy, but, uh, but but let's be honest here. So so for anyone who, who doesn't get what we're talking about here, let me, I'm going to bring the screen share up. This, this is how we're going to do it. Uh, bear with me while I find it. There is what we want, and that should be sharing the screen. All right. So what we have here. On gear report, we got a bunch of new stuff. This is what we always do. You know, we start out this week at gear report by talking about uh, the things that have been published since the last show, the, the last Friday. So that was uh, all of this stuff here. What was the last thing we talked about? It would have been. It would have been the endo snake, wouldn't it? And then the Gerson, was that the next day? Yeah. I think Did you so. talk about that? Did you talk about the? I don't think so. I talked about the Endo Snake. Okay. Yeah. So I think I think that was the, the last one published. So that was a full review. And we'll dig in and let you give a summary of that in a minute. And then everything beyond that, you'll see it ends with quick review. So we have created a new type of review that's not appropriate for every product. Um, 
you see a whole bunch of them here from TJ and I both, and they're all quick reviews. And we'll, we'll glance through each of those along the way this evening. But the idea is that, you know, honestly, some products, it's not worth enough to us, just, just being completely honest, it's not worth enough to us as reviewers to invest, you know, six or eight or 10 hours or whatever it takes to do a full long review, the long form review. But we think it, it can still provide value to people if we do something a little bit uh, shorter to the point, not a lot of discussion or storytelling that that can be fun to read sometimes. You know, for me, I, I like to see, you know, what someone was thinking when they bought it and how, how they were planning on using it and then what they did and how it turned out and other ideas they had. That's all interesting sometimes, but sometimes I'm like, dude, can you just get to the point? Should I buy it or not? And, and that's where we have these quick reviews that are much more condensed and compact. And it's like, ju just the facts, ma'am. You know, it's straight to the point. Let's get to it. So before we dive into a quick review, let, let's do one final look at uh, our only full, full length, full, full long form review for this week. If the page will load, here we go. That's the drawback of the long review, I guess, right? Is that it takes time for the page to load? It could be, yeah. Yeah, so, so, did I say it right? Gerson? Gerson. Gerson, yeah. okay, got it. Yeah, Gerson, uh, basically a Beretta 92, uh, but a better. Um, you know, we've got Taurus out there, of course. That is the only other one I know of. Um, I think there's an Egyptian version of the older Berettas. Uh, hmm. But as far as any type of a more modern copy uh, or clone or whatever you want to call it, um, this one here is almost spot on. Um, just a couple of the highlights on it. I mean, obviously with ammo and stuff like that, I've got about 500 rounds to it. That's At that point, I'm like, okay, I'm going to write the review. Uh, yeah. But, you know, fit, finish, uh, everything on it is, is great. Uh, the options it comes with may or may not float somebody's boat. But um, extended mag release, what appears to be, I'm guessing, it's one of the cons I put in there because I'm not a fan of it. The um, decocker up on the slide on this one is um, is a bit bulky compared to Beretta's. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm thinking it's an oversized is, is probably the case. Now, I haven't talked with EAA who imports the, the croissants actually about that. Um, but I may, shoot, I may shoot them a text or an email here in the next few days, just so I'm clear on it. Uh, but I did put that in there that, that maybe that's why it's, it's kind of bigger and bulkier. So I didn't really care for that too much. The window, uh, in the, uh, grips, the grips are great. G10 grips are pretty awesome, but I, uh, you know, the window, I, I could take it or leave it. I don't really care that it's there. I don't, I don't look at my rounds that way. One thing that is interesting, and I've got a picture there comparing the barrels, um, is a lot of your bread, a lot of your M9, you know, 92, you know, guys, you know, there's folks in the military, whatever, that don't like them. And there's gunsmiths out there that, you know, older ones don't like them and other things. And that's one of the areas that they say is a weak point on the Beretta is the uh, barrel lug locking block system there. Uh, what's interesting is pretty much everything on that croissant interchanges except for the barrel and locking block. So, uh, you know, I did not get an answer when I, when I pried on that, like, why did you you know, redesign this, maybe they redesigned it for you know, some proprietary reason of Beretta. I don't know, but uh, it is interesting that some people claim that is a weak spot uh, on that Beretta platform and they, and they did change it. So did they beef, make it, it looks a little beefier to me. Uh, you know, did they beef that up some to make it more reliable? I don't know, but um, yeah, great shooting as far as the overall thing that I can say about it. That's absolutely amazing is the trigger. Um, the take up, the pull weight, the, uh, the break, the stop, the reset, um, uh, pretty amazing. I, I don't remember. Certainly I've never, have never handled a Taurus that has as good a trigger as, as the Grisson. Um, and I don't ever recall even handling a, a Beretta variant of the 92 M9, whatever, uh, that has, I'm sure there's some custom stuff, well, some combat, other things that are out there. Uh, I've never handled one. I, 
the, that Gerson takes the cake as far as trigger on that that particular platform. Good. Awesome. Well, we appreciate you sharing that with us. Um, it, it's kind of a surprising one to me. I carried an M9 um, every now and then, uh, but I was in the Air Force, you know, I didn't even really have any real training, um, which, you know, of all, of all the things, you know, Air Force uh, covered everything about the jobs that I had because I, I did two different things. Uh, career-wise when I was in the Air Force and uh, the schools were very thorough and the on the job and continuing training was awesome. But then they said when, when I was an uh, air crew member uh, and, and they said, uh, you know, oh, Sergeant Kress, you like firearms. Good. You can be one of the two armed people in the air crew because, you know, we'd have seven or eight or ten people when we traveled. Two of us would be armed. And uh, – and I would carry an M9 under my flight suit concealed with, with the magazine that was in it. And that was it. And the training that I got for it didn't even involve firing live rounds. Uh, they had a pneumatic system to cycle the slide. And uh, to say that, that I look back at that in, in disgust and, and, and I'm mortified to think, what if I actually needed to you know, the, the crews, depending on me to save them with my expert, you know, handgun marksmanship skills. I mean, yeah, I qualified as a pistol expert. Never shot a live round. <laughs> yeah, doesn't make any damn sense at all to me. Um, and, and to say that I was competent to carry um, in that scenario, I think, is a travesty and, and a big hairy lie and... I don't like that. But so my limited experience, uh, you know, I, I often I think a lot of that, the, the bad taste I have in my mouth with the M9 isn't the gun. It's the scenario and situation I was in. So I kind of feel like I need to get my hands on one of these at some point and give it a try and see, see, see what I think now that I've been a little bit a little bit educated. I, I still. Well, it it might be, yeah. and I'll and I'll and I'll give you a, a heads up, but um, we might have that opportunity. Um, the Gen threes, which is really weird, um, they got clearance for importation of the Gen fours before they did the Gen threes, uh, and the only difference really is the Gen three is more like a Taurus. It has the frame mounted safety, and I know some people don't like that slide mounted uh, safety decocker, but uh, yeah, the the end of this month within the next couple of months anyway, the Gen 3s are supposed to be in. Our lovely ATF, uh, the story I've, I've got from EAA is that um, the Gen 3, the paperwork was not filed whenever they file the paperwork for it, and then they, all, they subsequently filed the paperwork for the Gen 4. Well, they went back after they filed the Gen, paperwork for the Gen 4, they wanted to rename the Gen 3. Uh, and just a simple name change on the ATF importation paperwork, they had to completely restart yeah. the process over. So how, how silly is that, you know? So you wanted to rename it because it implied like a sequential four is newer and better when it was really just like different features? Well, I, I guess because they figure that the, they figure that the, the frame mounted, uh, safety decocker should come first you know that's just my thoughts and opinions on it uh i don't really know <laughs> but yeah maybe they wanted a more fluid you know model name or whatever with it uh, who knows i didn't pry with that with the why i probably should have well i'd be interested to to hear what that was you you never know but, you know, Ghost has, you know, I get what you're saying with that is because, um, you know, Ghost has an issue. His first revolver was a Model 10, Smith & Wesson. One of the most iconic revolvers out there. One of the most long-lived revolvers started with the, uh, um, with the Smith & Wesson hand ejectors back in the late 1890s. And basically, you know, an 1890-something Smith & Wesson hand injector is the exact same as a Model 10 that's made today. And uh, 
They went right. through the went through the iterations, obviously the Smith and Wesson victory and the Smith and Wesson military and police before it became the Model Ten. But uh, you know, iconic, great. I love them to death. One of my favorite, if not my most favorite, uh, revolver platform. And yeah, it, it was that was his first revolver. He had some bad experiences with it, and so he's not a fan. <laughs> so you know, your experiences do play into what you like and what you don't like sometimes. It's no reflection on the mechanics or design or reliability or anything else with that particular uh, that, that particular firearm. And that's okay. Yeah. Um, the the comment that your experiences can impact your, your opinions, I think, uh, it, it, it's so obvious that uh, it's like, well, yeah, of course they would. But I think we forget that sometimes that uh, and then that's where I have to kind of step back on the on the Berettas and say, well, you know, I didn't like my experience with the M9. So I've always been like, I hate that thing. But looking back, I never even shot real bullets through it. I, I don't know. I carried it around. It was heavy and it pissed me off. And right. so, so now I hate it. That's not fair. You know? Right. Yeah. So yeah, I'm going to have to, I'm, I'm going to have to look into that a little bit more. And, um, and, and for the folks here uh, for the gear report team, I'll share that uh, Beretta has reached out to ask about doing some review stuff. And it's mainly, uh, on their, their kind of hard and soft goods right now. It's not on the firearms, Better but, um, trying to compete with what, maybe what? Smith and Wesson sector of that stuff or something. Well, probably, I mean, if you look at it from a business model standpoint, um, Smith and Wesson is really diversified and they did a lot of licensing early on. And I think have then brought some of those product development and, and stuff brought some of it in house. And then they've been more aggressive with doing some licensing as well so that they have a really broad product catalog outside of just firearms. Mm -hmm. So yeah, certainly Brett has been working on that for years. I mean, I remember four or five years ago at SHOT Show, checking in at their booth and it was, you know, two thirds, two thirds clothing. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, Oh, that was funny. TJ popped up and he went away and there he's back. I'm going to add him in here. And uh, you know what? I will even take that banner away. That's covering him up. There <laughs> we go. Thanks man. Yeah. Yeah. Anything for you, dude. Uh, yeah, bro. So anyhow, <laughs> yeah let's um let's see can we bring everyone back on the screen whoa look at that we're all here so um i don't know that i, I, look I like looked at any you know whatever soft goods or whatever from beretta i would assume without looking that probably a lot of shotgun clothing isn't there yeah they came up uh, i've seen the ads and there's a lot of uh like hats some uh like hunting hunting sh shirts and stuff like that you're right. much bigger in the hunting environment. I noticed that when I'm working for PSA, oh, we yeah. would always see, obviously, the high-end Beretta shotguns are what we move the most of, much more than the pistols. But people who came to buy the pistols, they wanted Beretta because they knew Beretta, whether it was law enforcement or just something that they remembered about Beretta. Hey, I remember the 92 or I like the PX4 or whatever it is. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, if anybody out there – has evidence to, to support otherwise, but I do believe Beretta is the oldest, longest lived firearm company on the planet at this point. I don't know. Definitely in the top five. I don't know if that's the oldest. Yeah. So what, while you guys are discussing, I went, they sent me a slide deck. Oh, nice. Um, and so this is their training gear line. And mm -hmm. you can see all the different stuff that, that none of this has been launched yet. I think maybe it's about oh. to be launched. I, I'm not sure. But uh, if, as I understood it, they're wanting to get whatever. Uh, so, so anyone here on the gear report team, if any of this looks good to you, let me know. I'll, I'll send a note out here shortly and we can, everyone can, maybe we'll get a spreadsheet going. Where everyone, here's what I'd like to review and I'll share sure. that with them and, 
see what products they want to get out in our hands. So, uh, I, I'm assuming just from you scrolling through that I'm going to be out on this one. I see no t-shirts with cartoon characters on it. So <laughs> I'm pretty much done. I'm still scrolling. I'm looking. Oh yeah. Looking. There's, ta there's like range bags. There's tactical yeah. bags. They got hats. They got knives. Um, they're going to have, uh, you know, no, I, like the, I, like gear. The case. I like that case. I like that tan case. I've got a, uh, I've got a FDE or a uh, Desert Camo ninety two that doesn't have a case. So that that FDE mm -hmm. case would, would be awful nice. Yeah. So anyhow, look, look for that gear report team. Uh, we should have some opportunities to review some different sorts of products with accessories and clothing and. I need shorts. I got to tell you, I'm, I'm going to hit them up for some shorts to review because my, uh, what is that noise in the background? It's the cat. The cat? Tell Steve, Steve to get out of the litter box and go somewhere else. S Steve, cut it out. Yeah, right, throw something at him. I did. <laughs> <laughs> He's good. Size extra husky. I didn't see that on their size list. I'm sorry. Um, we'll, uh, we'll we'll have to we'll have to look into that later. Anyhow, so since since we made the change last week, so I'm I'm going to go ahead and tell you how this went down. Okay, uh, I was down there with TJ, and we're talking about how the yeah I've wanted to have a shorter form for reviews for so long. And I just, I always write too much and mine get too long and too detailed. And, and, and then results, it takes way too long to write them. So, um, I, I kept him and hawing about how I want to change it and everything. And TJ's like, we'll just do it. And then we just sat down and laid out the, a really quick outline and I'm like, yeah, I don't know. I'll think about it. He said, what think about it? Just do it. So we did it. And uh, next thing you know, we got this flood of content coming out. And we're in a, a limited beta right now. So Caleb, TJ, Clover, and I have the template for this um, quick review. And uh, we've learned a little bit. And I, I was tweaking the template a little bit today. But um, and, uh, I think that we're getting close to the point of saying, okay, we're going to open this up so everyone can do these. You should. And uh, yeah. Amazon Chinese company, thank you long time when you do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, so, so I have a new on the, on the site, on this gray category bar, uh, the, the gray navigation bar under gear. Report, oh, I didn't notice that. Right. I've added quick reviews. Quick reviews. I, I so, didn't notice that. Yeah, That's when you awesome. Click, when you click, Quick reviews. Click quick reviews. Say that three times fast. Click quick reviews. Click quick reviews. Click, 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 click. Yeah. Exactly. So so you can see grouped all of the quick ones. And and what I'll do is we don't have too many of them just yet. So I've just got this quick reviews category. When we get enough that it's hard to scroll through and find stuff, I'll put a little bit of taxonomy under there. So maybe we'll have firearms and household. This is this is opening up. This is pushing towards some different categories because Gear Report was intentionally designed to be vague to give me and my uh, short attention span the ability. Oh, Stanley is waiting to get in. I'm going to click add to stream and we're just going to crowd up that left side of the screen now. All yeah, right. Yeah. Welcome. Mr. Hey, Orchard. guys. It's good. To yeah. So hey, speaking, of, speaking of the orchard. We've we've even added some gardening products here. So we've got the uh, greenhouse kit, and we'll have some other things in there. All right, we we may have to we may have to mute some of the background noise though. Um, hey, are you but, having an issue with that on my end? Got different. Uh, who, uh, let me go back and look and see if I can tell whose it is. Here, I'm going to mute real quick, and then I'll and let me know if that solves the issue. I wouldn't hear it right then anyway. It was it, it sounded like a kid in the background. So whoever had a kid nearby, that was probably who it was. So I'm not sure. But uh, anyhow, 
we've got mainly uh, some firearm stuff, a little bit of camping with a little survival tarp, um, a work light, battery, you know, charger, a wetsuit, spear gun. We got all kinds of stuff in here. Spear Smart watch. Yes. Okay. Spear gun. You got me at spear guns. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So some of this is stuff that came in, uh, like this Streamlight macro stream uh, flashlight um, as a result of SHOT Show. So that's something we already had in the queue and working. And I said, uh, you know what? This is so straightforward. Let me just do this as a quick review. So if you want to hear more about that flashlight, you, you see the little USB rechargeable plug. That That's there. You can go look at it. Um, let's look at uh, something a little bit different here real quick with this uh, smartwatch. Smartwatch doesn't really fit in any of the outdoor gear that we typically have reviewed in the past. But, you know, this is something that uh, since I got in that Amazon Vine program, they had all kind of watch accessories. And I'm watching for a week or two. And finally, I see a, an actual smartwatch pop up. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll review that. So it showed up and uh, and it's kind of neat looking. And I wore it for a week while I was in Florida. And when I got home, I said, you know what? I don't know that that having a watch on my wrist, I'm getting enough benefit out of it to be worth the sticky, you know, sweatiness under the watch band and that I got, I got a claustrophobic wrist apparently um, because I, I didn't like having that watch on there. So I gave it to my son. So I can't, I I can't like stand it. a, uh, I can't stand a watch that does not have hands on it. So hmm. well, it had a hot hand under it and kind of sticking out from under oh, it, yes, but, uh, but not on it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so interesting thing, if, if we go down, let's just hit the format here real quick so we can see how the quick review works. So we have that hero image at the top and then our gears rating with the, the image of the number of gears and then you know, spelled out, the, this in, in this case, it's three of five. A, a quick one or two or four sentence description of the product, where you can get it with a link. And then we've got our pros and cons. So those, and images. That, so and that's those it. that are out there, Jeff, that may be wondering about the gear rating, I don't know that we've ever talked about that before. Where's a three at for those out there that are curious? Is that average? Yeah. Okay, so here you go. I, I'm not ignoring you, but I was scrolling down to find where we had watch hands. So that's an option. You can have hands on that watch. Oh, digital But that hand. didn't change that I don't like having something on my wrist. So I was like, bump this. And my son was like, ooh, that's kind of awesome. And he loves watches. So I said, hey, you, I do, if, you're, I do, if you'll wear I do, it. Too. That's kind of cool. I like yeah, I, I, I'm okay with that. Yeah. I don't like digital because, this, but that's pretty cool. Yeah. And and I guess it was neat. You know, it would display weather and it kept track of my sleep patterns, which kind of freaked me out because it'd say, you know, like in this case, almost six hours of light sleep, two hours and 40 minutes of uh, deep sleep. It's like that kind of weirds me out a little bit, you know. That's I don't what they, know what they program you. Yeah, yeah, it's telling you exactly how you're failing at sleeping. Apparently, apparently, and I was like, "Dang, I'm gonna have to drink more, so maybe I'll pass out a little more solidly." And every night it got worse. You should set that alert: drink more now, sleep better later. Oh yeah, now you tell me where were you when I needed you sleeping? It has a, a, Soundly, yeah. So, so anyhow, I, I was really not talking about the watch here as much as the format here, where it's purely the rating. So, you're going to see real quick did the author like it or not? How much did they like it? How much did they dislike it? If it's good, you know, maybe, maybe you want to click through and look at if you want to buy it, and uh, pros and cons, and that's it. No more discussion, just some pictures. Um, so that format, I'd, I'd love to hear feedback from anyone on the panel, anyone out in the, the comments on uh, on this new format for, for the reviews as we go through these. James I, I got to say, I'm going to jump on that real quick because uh, I, I have done one review for you guys. And um, it was boring, and I, by the way. That, I, I appreciate that it was a learning experience, uh, so thank you for that. Uh, I enjoyed the heck out of it, and and I've had uh, I, if for anybody who's like kept up with the channel or anything like that, or anybody who is not, 
um, as a result of losing my job, uh, decided to go on a little tour to force of uh, a summer vacation for my wife, take her to see her uh, family who hadn't, she hadn't seen in a while, prevented me from being able to uh, do a whole lot of work outside of that. But I'm back to it, which is why I'm here tonight, too, is because I'm, I'm wanting to learn from you guys. I want to do more of this. And I got to say that the, the templates that you guys had available for these sort of things, uh, for starters, it, it was enlightening to see, to, to have that template, to have it right there and available for you. But for two, I also found it uh, probably uh, doubled my affiliate sales for the week where that came out. So I was totally stoked about it. I mean, you're, you're dead nice. on. You've, you guys have nailed this. Yeah, and it worked for me. Um, now the big failure on my end is just, you know, getting stuff out there. Mm -hmm. Join the club. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, oh, well, look at that. Once again, brings his own audience with him. Good job, Stanley. What's All up, right. Grant? I appreciate you. I, I tell you what, Grant here is a good friend of mine since, uh, since the beginning of when I first started, uh, uh, YouTube, he was one of the guys, him and a, a close group of my friends here are the ones who uh, we all work together even to this day. He was one of my uh, my uh, uh, mentors when I first started. And uh, I, I got to say that prior to meeting you guys, Mr. McIntosh here was my, uh, my, my kind of affiliate buddy. We worked together on a lot of things and learned a lot. So I, I, anything that I've done with affiliates, a large portion of that is due to that guy. So thank you for showing up and, and, and helping us out here, Grant. Yeah, absolutely. And if you want to hop on the team and play along with us, let me know. We've always got room for people who uh, are are of the same mindset, like to help people, and and we can learn from each other. So uh, that's what it's all about. And and by the way, Stanley, we're we're happy you're back. I am sorry to hear that you had some uh, some job issues. I know a lot of that has been going around. Uh, but I am absolutely thrilled that you took that as an opportunity to get some family time. I got to tell you, I've, I've seen from your videos, your kids aren't as old as my kids. They will be. And you'll be like, what happened? Where did the time go? So I am thrilled for you that, that you took you, you took those lemons and turned them into family time. So that that's awesome. I'm All trying. Right. You know, I'm trying to put the silver lining anywhere I can. You're, you're right. That was the first approach. We had some free time. Let's use it for family time. Yep. Awesome. All right. So uh, let's just real quick blow through some of these reviews. And, uh, you know, Clover and I were talking uh, a couple of days ago about the idea that uh, I let these shows get a little drawn out sometimes. Uh, this, this was my comment, not his. He, he's, uh, he's far too polite to, to tell me something like that. Uh, but he was uh, thinking it. Yeah, I, get to the uh, yeah, point, Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> everyone's thinking it we know that but uh okay so anyhow i'm going to try to keep moving and maybe maybe have a little less of the just kind of drawing at the end and uh let's get her done and get out uh this um face gator gator mask neck gator neck buff face mask what do we want to call them i don't even know it's a um, face they call them a, a, <laughs> yeah everybody loves the muff right so um I thought that the name of this company was really hella clever, you know, AX, BX, CX. Um, yeah, clearly a well thought out name. I wore one of these. Uh, I, uh, I volunteered. My, my daughter was uh, swimming in the Junior Olympics last weekend down in uh, Cocoa Beach, Florida. And I volunteered so I could get on the pool deck and watch everything. And to be on the pool deck, you had to have, to be even on the grounds of the competition you had to have some sort of face mask because i don't i don't normally wear one i mean i had COVID after shot show months ago and i'm not worried about it so i i don't wear one but they insisted so so this was uh, something i got off of amazon and wore and it did absolutely fantastic it was light and breezy and i had a couple people say oh were you are you in the military you know because the buzz cut and the camo on my face and i said oh it's been it's been a couple decades but i was yeah. So anyhow, I like them. That is the quick. What do we, we did? We did go with quick reviews, right? Quick reviews. Yes. Quick reviews. Yeah. And what was it? What was it initially before we changed it? Micro reviews. 
Yeah, that just didn't really seem good to me. Nah. I, I think quick reviews sounds a little more to the point. Um, Stanley, what can you tell me about Paul Spears? Uh, I can tell you right off the bat that uh, Cressy, uh, anything that Cressy does is uh, premium for the market. Those guys have set the bar. What you're looking at right there, you call that a pole spear. I've always called that a Hawaiian sling, and I'm not a fan. It doesn't work for uh, stuff that we do down here too much. Um, you don't got a lot of juice. You don't have a lot of power behind that thing. Now, obviously, that's Cressy, and that's really well made. So if you're after, you know, if you're in Florida and you're looking for uh, lionfish, yes. um, if you're looking for, for stuff that size, that thing is perfect. That thing is going to be yeah. wonderful. It's going to, uh, you know, one of the problems that I have is I've got my spear gun here. And if I'm spear fishing around the jetty or an oil rig, you, you're not just aiming for the fish that you're going for. You're also being mindful of whatever's behind him. Because the last thing you want to do sure. is shatter your spearhead on a rock behind them. You don't have right. quite the issue with one of these Hawaiian slings. Hmm. So I see somebody's already beat me to the punch on a review for this thing. Um, if Cressy is in the house at any point or watching this video, I'd like to say you might want to give me a shot at review. One of these things I can get fish with it. Yeah. Yeah. You'll get more fish with it than me. I, you know, honestly, this is something that popped up on that Amazon vine program. Um, and I'm just scrolling through. I'm like, oh, pole spear. That looks interesting. And yeah. I had him send it to me. And uh, then I took it to Florida with me and didn't even get out to use it. So I don't know when or where I'm actually going to be able to use it. But it looks super cool. I was like, I've, I've got to get a hold of this and see what it's about. And now that I've got that, I've done a little bit of reading on it. And I'm like, I'm not even sure when I'm going to be able to use it. So uh, I, that I mentioned that because uh, a lot of the stuff that we've reviewed over the years, I've got a little bit of a relationship with the brand and I, I could call them up and say, hey, I got someone even better to send this to than me um, and maybe they'll send it. But since this was like an anonymous, uh, you, you, the, the Vine thing on Amazon, it's just a list of products. I just click that whatever's available, I click on what I want and the brand never even knows who has it as far as I know, so. Although, uh, maybe maybe I'll reach out to them and just share a link and say, hey, I got this through the Vine program. Let me know if you have anything else you want to do, and, and we can talk. Um, They'll probably get I, kicked out of the Vine program, but who knows? <laughs> yeah, no, no, I know exactly how that goes. And, and I got to say that, uh, you know, I'm a fanboy of the brand, so. Good. Good. All right. <laughs> if they want a uh, what is probably going to be a slightly biased review, they're going to get it out of me. <laughs> yeah, I got you. Um, yeah, I'll see if I can if I can make contact with them. Uh, you never know. I had uh, one that I did one that published today. If I scroll up, a, a portable greenhouse. So as part of this COVID stuff, when we had toilet paper shortages, and oh my God, you know, early on. We're, we're going to have grocery stores shut down and where are people going to get food? And one of my kids said, you know, we've been talking about doing a garden forever. We ought to go ahead and, and do one. And uh, so we, we, we started a garden and in large part, it's been an abject failure. We've learned a lot. One of the things that we learned is that uh, you got to get started sooner in the season because the plants take so long to mature that, you know, it, the season's almost over before you know, some of ours just won't mature enough to, to bear any fruit this year or vegetables or whatever. So I wanted a greenhouse for next year. It's another thing I found on Amazon was this little portable greenhouse. So I popped this up and you'll see it's a little bit more in depth than a typical quick review because yeah, I, I got a little chatty on this one. But then when I was done, I, as I'm sharing it around on social media, I, I tagged the brand and in the, in the process of trying to find an Instagram for them, which I never did find, I found their Facebook page and I just dropped them a little message on Facebook with a link and said, Hey, I got this through the vine program and just posted the review. 
Um, I submitted it to Amazon. So whenever they approve it, it'll be available. And here's the link on my site. And they sent me back. So, oh, thanks so much. Can we use some pictures and, and quote you? And it's like, hey, as long as you link it back to me, you know, link it back to Gear Report, I'm happy. But they were very receptive to having that discussion. And it was kind of neat that through the Vine program, like I don't think this product's actually been released yet. Um, it was like a preview. And uh, so it didn't even on their website or anything. So, so it was really cool for them. And that's the same with uh, Cressy with that pole spear. I searched their website. It's not there. So they're getting some kind of early feedback and reviews out of this program. Um, and I think that that does potentially give an opportunity to start some additional discussions. I just have to check and make sure that that isn't, you know, taking it offline and out of the Amazon Vine program doesn't get me in trouble and get me kicked out of the program because I'm getting all kind of cool stuff that I don't have to spend money on that, that I'm happy about. So, I am not uh, totally familiar with Amazon Vine. Is there? Uh, I, I was, I, I'm new at this. Uh, oh man, you're talking wetsuits now. Again, you're speaking my language. But what are the requirements <laughs> for getting into uh, to Vine? No one knows. They don't publish <laughs> okay. requirements. It's a it's a private invitation only program that I okay. didn't even know about until I got invited to it and. Uh, a little bit of research I did, uh, TJ and I have been working on this. Um, it, it seems to be that, that they invite people when they deem you to be very helpful in Amazon reviews. Um, so if, if you look at an Amazon review, it, in, instead of like a thumbs up or thumbs down or a like button, it has a helpful button. So if you're reading it, and, oh, wow, this helped me and click help you know, helpful, then that is a, a thumbs up to the person who wrote it. And apparently Amazon tracks those. And for me, when I broke about 150 helpfuls on my Amazon reviews, I got the invitation and it took a couple of years. And I had, I don't, I don't remember how many, but 30 or 40 or 50 reviews or something. Um, Cause I don't do a lot of Amazon reviews just because, you know, I, I'm doing reviews on places where I can monetize them. I try not to do free reviews too much, but apparently I did enough and got enough positive feedback through their system that they said, yeah, we'd like to give you access to this product, this catalog of thousands of products that um, every day, you know, they'll, they make, uh, they, they open up a certain number of slots for each person. And it seems to be somewhere between three and seven, depending on the day where you request the products and, you know, they show up a couple days later um, and you don't pay for them. And you know, after six months you own them and you can dispose of them however you like, sell them or keep them or whatever. But um you, you, it does count that each product has a tax value on it. So uh, it's kind of like, you know, they treat it kind of like being paid, I guess. But that, that's that program. And, you know, TJ has been writing reviews on Amazon stuff like a madman, um, trying to, uh, and sharing around, you know, like I've got a link on my, um, my other computer to TJ's Amazon reviews. So whenever he posts some Amazon reviews, then I'll go click helpful on them. And if he gets a couple people to do that, you know, four or five people and he does 20 products, he'll be over a hundred helpfuls real quick. And, you know, we'll see how long it takes to get invited to the program. I, I don't know. Yeah. I'm kind of curious. I'd like to be kept in on that. I do uh, Amazon reviews myself. And yeah. I am more than happy to be one of those guys jumping in and giving the, the helpful thumbs up on that. Sure. Yeah, I figure we can all help each other on that. It's a giant experiment. It is, and I don't, I don't know if that's going to work. Um. Yeah. Oh, that's weird. Well, you know, I bet Mr. you money. Amazon, they're tracking those helpful thumbs up, but they're also tracking the IP address that they came from. I guarantee it. Oh, I, I don't doubt that at all. They track but um, yeah, 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 they do. They, when we first started doing affiliate stuff, uh, we set up our affiliate account with Amazon and, you know, we, we were, were really green, very new. And I think I had 250 subscribers at the time on YouTube 
And uh, they had a 500 subscriber requirement deal or whatever it was. I don't know. But you had to have three sales in whatever that time frame was. And yep. so I directed my wife to buy things using, you know, our affiliate links. And they knew. I don't know how. Her credit card has her maiden name on it. So I have no idea how they were able to tell that, that, it, that it was associated with us. Um, hmm. You know, did, used a different computer. I think she used her phone through our Wi-Fi. So maybe it was the Wi-Fi that did it. I don't know. But they were able to tell. And I, I didn't get credit for her, her purchases. Yeah, I, you know, I'll, I'll click my own links when I buy stuff. And uh, I often will see that they don't give credit for it. So. I don't know. It's a crapshoot. They they have some sort of criteria, but I'm not sure what that is. It's Jeff All Bezos. Right, so. He's hanging out in your closet watching what you're doing. Yeah. Well, I try to give a good show, but I'm I'm pretty firm on this. There are a lot of things in life that I will bend and be flexible on. I am not above doing a show, but I better get paid. I think I think that's very fair. All right. Clover, you want to talk about your work light real quick? It's a light, man. What you know? Um that's why it's a quick review. That's what makes it perfect for a quick review, right? <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. Um, y'all you know, I'll talk a little bit about the quick review first. Um, yeah, it takes five minutes to do the quick review and three days to do the readability and SEO. So uh, at the end of the day, is it really is it really quick? But uh, I did crack the code. I did get everything green, so that's good. We'll see how that works out. Uh, it's a great opportunity to to you know put in some of those links and do some other things. And I rewrote the uh, what is a quick review. I don't know if you noticed that or whoever did the uh, final edit or not. But uh, I kind of rewrote that. I didn't like the way the uh, template was worded. So. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, it's it's a light. It also doubles as a battery bank or whatever you want to call those things. Um, has a spot mode, flood mode, or it'll run both as kind of displayed there in the pictures. A uh, little kickstand that uh, comes out. You can set it up. I've used it. You know, that's one of the companies that just hits you up through eBay. I mean, through uh, YouTube or whatever. And I thought, yeah, you know, I was kind of thinking of, well, I, I could work this in somewhere. I mean, I, you know, that's kind of cool having a, I mean, you can't use a light for something. And uh, I've used right. it around the house and working on vehicles and other things. Um, that sucker, man, even in uh, spot or just the flood mode will light up the yard and you kick both of them on and it'll almost blind you. So um, it's, it's pretty decent. You should keep it with your uh, with your toilet gun, so you can blind someone. That's true, yeah. If when they come at you, that's true. Yeah, yeah, that could work. Yep. Yeah. All right. Um, and I had not noticed you changed the uh, quick review little paragraph at the bottom. Um, I, I'm going to guess that yours is a little bit better than what was already down there, so uh, I may yeah. copy that and put it in the template. Well, I don't mind, but I did want to mention that I did that. So, you know, I mean, do what you, what you want to do. Or if you want it to all remain uniform and tell me not to do that anymore, that's fine. But it's just the uh, the flow. Well, I, think, better. I think everyone should know by now that as long as it's making stuff better, I'm all for people, you know, coming with new ideas. So all right. All right. here is another one, battery tender. So this is this was neat. This Amazon, again, not to run Amazon Vine into the ground, but it's new for me right now. So um, one of the cool things about it is like that Cressy Pole Spear. That's a, a hardcore brand name in their market. The uh, Hev2, um, I think that's how you say it, uh, wetsuit, not a big name in their market. So you've got the Chineseium on one hand and you have the premium Italian on the other. The other hand, then we got battery tenders like a not not a super premium, but like a mainstream. You find them at, at all the major you know retail outlets. You know, it's not a Chineseium knockoff type thing. It, it's one of the one of the quote real brands. So you, you find all kind of stuff on there. And I thought this one was kind of neat. 
uh, and actually wrote a little bit more about this one as well. And and what's interesting is my project, my, my process for these is I have to submit the Amazon review anyway. So I just copy that text into the uh, into the template and uh, and I'm pretty much done. I just have to and I already have the pictures. Um, uh, so one thing I found on Amazon, if I have my little copyright gear report, it rejects the whole thing. So I have to do a separate set just for Amazon. So I'll take the raw images and upload them off my phone and do that review for Amazon off the phone. And then I copy that text out of the Amazon review into the quick review template and post it on gear report. And I may put a little more time and, and, uh, you know, additional pictures and, and stuff like that in it. I think I put an extra three or four paragraphs in the gear report when it's not in the Amazon review, uh, just because th this was a neat enough product that I kind of got talking about it a little bit more. So if you need, uh, for me, I hooked it up. You may have saw down there, I hooked it up to my little lawn tractor because uh, I'm too lazy to push a mower. I need something I can sit on and let it carry me around the yard while I'm mowing. Um, I, I kind of consider it my portable mowing throne. Um, so I, I uh, am trying to milk every, every day I can out of that battery. So that little solar charger is uh, clamped onto the frame of that little portable shed that the, that the lawn tractor hides in. So it uh, keeps the battery topped up for me. And th those are pretty reasonably priced too. I think. Let's see. TJ, you want to talk about a Drago, Drago, however we want to call it, uh, rifle case? The, the the Drago, I'm just going to say Drago. Sounds cooler. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, it was a solid rifle case, padded both sides, plenty of storage, had a ton of storage in it. Um, it just, you know, the little, uh, the cords kept pulling out of the zippers, and you said you had one after nine months, the zippers broke. And yeah, the I main had, zipper, the poles broke. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I've had two or three of the Dragos where I've had the, the zippers have broken. And I mean, they still function, but it's a pain because you got to try to, you know, wedge the zipper out and then zip yep. it out because you can't hook anything else back into it. So, I mean, it was, it was solid. It's, it's, you know, it's a single gun, a single rifle case. So it's kind of like, eh, all right. If I'm doing a review on a gun, then it will go. Right. And uh, and you got a link to some double rifle cases in here yes. as well. So um, that's Working something it. I found interesting about your your kind of synopsis here was, eh, you know, you can go with the single rifle case, but they have them that look pretty much the same and are roughly the same size. But yeah. they're double rifle cases. About the same. And same they cost product. about the same. So, yep. yeah, I, I think I'd probably opt for a double. And then if I only want to carry one rifle in it, that's all I do. Yeah. Um, all, all my all my rifle cases are doubles or if not more, but they, I, I, this is like the first single that I've had. Yeah, so what I've done with mine um, and yours didn't have the backpack straps on it, but it had the little clips for it. Uh, right. and you don't have a picture of the backside because there was nothing interesting on the backside. Mm -hmm. Mine actually had backpack straps on it. And that makes it really convenient. So that's an option that I, I don't know how you get it. Maybe you have to go to their website to get it. Um, but, but that's really cool. But then the big outer pocket. So there are three little pockets on that on the one side and under it's a long pocket. I've used that to put some soft pistol cases or even just pistols without cases. Just drop a couple of them in there and mags and ammo in the little side pockets. And I, I get a whole trip to the range with one bag pretty much. Yeah, yeah, it's got it's got a plenty, it's got a ton of storage in it. That's that's one yep. thing I, I mean I'd like about it, and so I'm keeping it. Sweet. All yeah. right, thank you, sir. Uh, let's see. What are we doing? We have any questions out there? We've we've had someone kind of harassing us out there in the comments. I think I blew away most of those. I'm assuming that's Daniel again. He harassed us a month or two ago denied it vehemently and then he was at my house a couple weeks after that and quietly oh yeah that was me like dude i knew it was you um 
Aqua Quest Survival Silk Tarp Review. Weird little tarp that, that said it's still nylon and, and actually has the polyurethane coating on the bottom, which is silicon impregnated nylon, wouldn't have that or need it. So I'm not even sure. It seemed like a little kind of Chinese verbal puffery in the uh, product description to me. Um, may, maybe not being 100% forthright in, in how it's made. I don't know. But uh, aside, that's, that's why it didn't get a little higher. I'm actually thinking maybe I should lower it to, to like a 3 or 3.5. I may do that because the more I think about it, the more it bothers me. Although it's built nice. It's a good size. It's got tie-out points all over. So that's kind of weighing on me as well. Like, yeah, it's pretty solid. So I don't know. I reserve the right to modify ratings and reviews as I have more time with the products. So we, we may have to do that. Okay. TJ, see, I was thinking TJ had a ton of these, was going to be talking a lot. And then I remembered, oh yeah, I think three of three or four of his are in the queue for the next few days. They haven't yeah, been published not yet. Scheduled for, in the future, they will be. Yeah. So this one is... This is the set on the right in the brown case, right? Yeah, the punch set. The other one? Yeah, okay. And then the other yeah. one, it's already it's already been edited and it's in the queue. I just delayed it so we'd have a week or two space in between them. Yeah, I don't, I don't so want to hold up everything. Yeah. Do you want yeah, to talk about that, these? Yeah, yeah, the punch set was uh, Obsidian sent me these. They sent me, you know, the, the both of them. Um, and uh, the punch that works great. I like it. It's uh, each each one of the punches is labeled individually, mm -hmm. so it's like you know you, you can't mix them up. It, it, they are what they are. The pouch takes up minimal minimal room in my bag, so it's a it's it's a permanent fixture in the range bag there. Yeah, cool. So do you see on the screen where I clicked and enlarged that picture? TJ, do you see that? No, uh, no. If you have, um, if it's a pop up or something like that window, it won't because you're only sharing the one that you're sharing. Yeah, gotcha. Okay, so so that oh, it opened in a different window. Okay, well, never mind then. I was, so what I did was click on it, and and that's right. something for the behind the scenes comment is make sure um, the WordPress editor remembers what you do. So the next picture that you add. Make sure when you add it to the review that you tell it to link to the media file instead of to none. Because then, since it links to the media file, someone can click it. Now, you'll change it to open in a new window, but then they can enlarge it and they can actually see where it has the, um, uh, the sizes are yeah. like laser etched in each one. As it is right here, you can't see that. So. Right. That, I that's wasn't aware of that. that. Yeah. Uh, that's, all, that's all new to me. Crazy talk. Yeah. We, we didn't get and you want it. Over. Yeah. You generally, you generally want it to open in another window mm -hmm. uh, so that people don't get lost and, you know, quit reading the review because a picture popped up. Ooh, picture, you know, and then you lose them. So <laughs> I, I always have them open in another window. Which is in the picture properties in WordPress, where you when you add the image, you, actually you can't change that when you add the image. You got to come back to it. So, so what's the price point on that set? Um, that set was, uh, I think it was, it was like forty five bucks. Okay, I'm checking. Wow, forty five and free shipping. Yep, forty five on the money, like forty five point zero zero. Is that for each one, or they both come together? No, so that's just the uh, that's just the punch set. Okay. Yeah, and they have a uh, like a lifetime. If you break it or bend it or whatever, you know, let them know that they'll send you a new one. I'm I'm, I'm going to send the uh, the AR one I bent back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you should. Oh, I'm going to. We'll see. We'll see if they honor it. Yep. All right. Oh, what happened? I think I, oh no, I went too far. I'm clicking like a wild man over here. Let me get back where I'm supposed to be. I need to get back to my safe space. All right. Oh, that's all of them, isn't it? Cause we already looked at the greenhouse. Greenhouse is pretty cool. 
uh, we were talking about the reaching out to the company and not the greenhouse, but it, it's pretty cool. A little pop-up thing. It rolls up in a little case and, uh, you know, you fold it out and pop it up into place. And I, I think that's going to do really well. And, uh, I think I got some grow lights and uh, a little watering set. And, you know, uh, Amazon has got to think that I'm starting a pot farm or something, but uh, we're going to get, up. we're, we're going to try a range of different things. Uh, once it cools off outside, um, like we'll, we'll start, I've been collecting seeds all year so far so we'll try like some squash and tomatoes actually squash i think is too big the plants spread out too much i'm gonna have to figure out what kind of plants are are reasonable to do with a grow light in a greenhouse over the winter because i i don't know i need something that's going to be kind of compact but actually produce like something edible otherwise I mean, like, what's the point like, right like hemp well, like you hemp had a for rope you know, just for rope. You could put together, I've done squash in um, like a hanging fashion before. And so oh. uh, it's not, it's not too terrible. And um, you could easily build some kind of a stand or something to be able to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm going to have to figure something out. And my wife rolled her eyes at me because the next door neighbor had a big plastic contraption sitting out by the curb for the, for the, recycling or trash or whatever and I'm, I'm texting them going hey what is that a workbench um because i need some a plastic shelf of some sort to put in this greenhouse um so that if it gets wet you know i don't want wood that's going to rot and get fungus or whatever growing on it mold uh plastic would be good and she, oh yeah said that uh the husband was using it as a workbench and he stacked a bunch of heavy stuff and it made it a little unstable and it bowed in the middle so it wasn't good for as a workbench anymore, but it'd be fine for putting, you know, seed trays on it. So, so I hauled that in from the road. My wife's like, oh, he's picking through the neighbor's garbage again. But, you know, but I got a plastic shelf uh, multi-level to put seed trays on and hang grow lights from. And I'm happy. So I don't care. Your CBD business is going to be exploding a year from now. Um, yeah, you know, I, I don't know that even if, if they did go to the more lax enforcement in North Carolina, like they've done in some other areas, I, I, I just don't know. Um, I don't know if I could do it. How are you going to, don't worry about it. There are no police. They're all defunded. You could just do whatever you want. Right. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, so, so here's the thing. I, um, I don't want to get too political. So I probably shouldn't even go down this road, but, uh, but I grew up in, uh, you know, I was, I was in, uh, middle school, high school in the, in the late eighties. And, uh, you know, the war on drugs was running wide open and, you, you know, all of this stuff was, was completely demonized for me. So, so for me, it's like, it, it would never even cross my mind to, to, to grow pot or, or any of that. Um, but then we were in Florida and TJ, I don't know what you're letting happen down there, but I'm driving down the road and I'm like, what in the world? That, that's his medical marijuana dispensary. That's a strip mall. What, what's going on down here? You know, it, it kind of weirded me out. I, I don't know what to think about it because... You're going to say something? You're going to defend your state, TJ? It's, it's a different world down here. You know that. Yeah, it is a different world. Uh, Jeff, that, Jeff was that, making fun of us because we weren't doing anything because the uh, the Cat One hurricane was coming in. I was like, "That's only Cat One. Who cares?" Yeah, he's like, "What's wrong with yeah. you people?" We we like, had the same response to Hannah a couple weeks ago. Hmm. Yeah. So uh, interestingly, out on the barrier island as the hurricane comes by and just kind of hanging out in the yard and drinking and watching the trees flop around no big deal and then uh so i get back to north carolina and we're, we're kind of as we're driving up from florida to north carolina it gets more cloudy and we get a little bit of rain it's like oh we're catching up to the hurricane <laughs> and uh, apparently sad, sad story that um 
the uh, well, not too terribly sad, but you know, sad ish. Uh, I do a lot of work with the uh, Sea Scouts and maintaining boats for them and teaching kids how to sail and that kind of thing. And uh, someone who had a uh, uh, kind of smallish offshore type uh, sailboat that had taken the scouts out before and they were trying to schedule a trip to take the Sea Scouts out and spend a weekend on the on the boat sailing off the coast of North Carolina. His boat was in a marina in Southport that just got decimated. Every damn boat there's done. So pretty sad. But I was more worried about us in Florida and thought, oh, by the time it gets up to North Carolina, it's not going to be nothing. And then they got more damage than in Florida. Yeah. Anyhow. So uh, we have covered the formal topics and, and as well as lost the majority of the audience. So, <laughs> uh, interesting. Oh, we do. Uh, I did see in the chat down there, a friend of mine, uh, Mr. Pouliot Outdoors is another one of those friends I was telling you about. Just want to take a second and say, hey, Nick, I appreciate you joining us, man. Yeah, same here. Re really appreciate you stopping by. Thank you. Um, all right. Anything any, anyone else wants to talk about before we wrap this up? We, we've done the... All right, so we, we, we spent the bulk of the time going over stuff that's been published and the new format. We didn't talk about anything that's coming. Does anyone have anything that they're just dying to talk about that's in your review queue that you think you're going to publish soon? Soon? No. I did land two oh, yeah. this week that I've got coming. I've got a uh, shotgun from EAA, and I've got a one of the Mossberg Blaze 47s coming. So pretty much that's up. That, you know. Okay, so that I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna say something. Mm -hmm. The the review that I get the most grief for in YouTube, mainly YouTube, um, is was it 715T Mossberg? It's like what is it like a <laughs> model sixty yeah, the, the AR style? Oh my god. It is the is that what you're talking about. I've seen Yes, I've seen better. Yeah. It's a, it, it's, it's, is it the model 60? Is that what it is? The, the, no. what, what model is it? It is the, the base model gun that's inside. It's what I'm saying. The barreled action that's hiding in it. Yeah, I don't remember. I think it's the Mossberg Plink, Plinkster or something, isn't it? Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, that, yeah. that does sound right. Whatever it is, it's like the Mossberg version of the 1022. It yeah. is, uh, from what I hear, a pretty reasonable little firearm. Uh, but then they they double the price and wrap it in the worst. I used to call it Toys R Us plastic. Toys R yeah. Us went out of business, which I think doesn't speak well for the quality of stuff sold. <laughs> so, right. so that to me says, yes, absolutely, Toys R Us is the right way to describe it. It was utter crap. I never shot it. I, I shot a video and then shut the camera off and literally ran down the steps, got in the Humvee, drove to meet someone to sell it to them without even shooting it. It was that big of a piece of crap. I wasn't even going to dignify it with ammo. I have one uh, mm -hmm. of the 715 T's and I've had it. I've had it for a while. Uh, did not pay to retail. I bought it used, I think, for 75 or 100 bucks or something like that. Um mm -hmm. And so that's one of the reasons that, um, you know, I said, yeah, sure, let's do this. Is I called, okay, I've already got the AR variant. Why not have the AK2 and maybe right. compare compare the two, right? Uh, it's yeah. certainly not one of my most favorite rifles at all. It mm -hmm. doesn't even doesn't even crack the top twenty on uh, yeah. twenty two rifles, you know. <laughs> now you're just showing off. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying. <laughs> right. Um, so is is this AK version similar where it's that plinkster action with with cheap plastic around it? Or it, did, it, did they actually do this one right? It looks that way. I mean, honestly, it does look like a, you know, um, and I mean, they do the same thing. I mean, what is it? Archangel that makes the chassis that bolt basically over 1022 action. And there's a lot of different weird things out there like that. And that's pretty much what it is. It looks like a chassis or a, a shell has been screwed over the top of, of one. I don't know. We'll, we'll see, but yeah, yeah that's, that's how it appears from the pictures that I see. 
but pictures oh, can so be deceiving. On it yet. Okay. No, no, that's what I, I said. I just to see that. I because... close the deals. I close the deals. That's what I'm saying. Not much to talk about except for hey, they're coming because I yeah. closed the deals on those two this week. So gotcha. Okay. Yeah, I'm anxious to see that. If it's if it's painted plastic that's like a, a clamshell that they put on from each right. side and run two, three screws through it, then just just throw it in the trash, make me happy. Um, or not. I mean, you, you, you review it however you see fit, but I'll tell you, they, they, uh, I, I'd been a Mossberg fan for years, uh, grew up with, uh, with some Mossbergs and, uh, always thought the world of them. And I got that thing and was like, Oh, all right. Well, well I have completely lost faith in this company now. That stuff, the look pretty stuff has a place and I'll tell you where that place is. Toys R Us. I already told you. No, it's a draw, right? Because it looks cool or whatever. So um, it will get them in. You know, you get a kid that it might, they might get interested in that because of that. But then as they shoot, they realize that, oh crap, this rifle is much better or that rifle is a much better rifle. So they realize that, but it's that draw yeah. to get, to get somebody in. So it's the yeah. bug light. Yeah. And, and my, um, my complaint wasn't that it was that it was p poorly executed. It, it was utter crap from a quality standpoint. So well, I, I'm anxious to see that, what, what you, you think know, of the AK-47. I don't know when the first iteration of, of all that stuff began with the clamshell design over the top of a firearm, but yeah. it's, it's not new. It's been going on for many, many years. So. Right. Right. And, and most brands who do it, I don't have a problem because it's well executed and the plastic right. is like, it's a fiber reinforced, you know, and it's got a good feel to it. And, and that, that 715T was just crap. Yeah. Well, I've got a, I've got okay. one of those Archangel stocks on a Remington 597. I think it is that uh, it mm -hmm. feels the same way. Hmm. All right. So TJ's got a few things in the queue that'll publish shortly. And did you say you had a, a full a full length review coming, Teach? Yeah, I'm, I'm be finishing up the uh, the streamlight, the TLR RM2. Right. Should yeah, that's a beefy. That that's a beefy light. I like it. Yep. Good. The blind and animal is one down here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I kept it near me. So when I was staying at TJ's house, I, I had an air mattress on the floor right behind where he's sitting. And that light sits just off to the side. Oh, it'd be that side. Um, uh, and the cats would come through there at night. I have a cat allergy and I don't like cats. So I was like, I, that thing's heavy. I'm keeping it close by. It's like an aluminum body on that light. Right. So it's like, that'll, that's a good hurling weight is what I was thinking. Um, not even blinding them because, you know, that's temporary. I need to get rid of them for good. Um, they never came by when I was awake, so I didn't get to throw it at them. But that's what I was thinking because it had some heft to it. It seemed very well built. Um, let's see. I've got Stanley. Do you have anything that, that you're thinking about uh, bringing our direction? Yeah, actually, uh, just by coincidence, I got hit up by Mustad uh, last week. And uh, I am totally stoked about that. These guys, in my opinion, this is a match made in heaven. Uh, in my opinion, those guys make the best fish hooks I have ever used in my life. I am more than happy to be sharing uh, uh, my insight on their product. And they're also going to provide a, a discount for, you know, whoever uses a, a special discount code thing. I'm finishing that oh, whole thing up. Nice. Yeah, I thought, you know, they, they came at me with that discount code thing, and I thought, you know, that's uh, that's all I could have. That, that's all I would want, you know, just something yeah, where yeah. I can actually, like, put in my two cents and give somebody else a shot at uh, getting a product that I'm a total fan of. I'm stoked about right. it. So I, awesome. doing that, and I'll probably do something for uh, Fitech Castnets. I'm a fan of their product as well. And they've worked with me in the past, and it's the least I can do. It'd be very, very easy. 
to write a very thorough and in-depth review on, on the work that they put into their product. So you can probably see that. Expect that one coming from me as well. Okay, awesome. And, and keep in mind with this new format, you can do some long form stuff. You can do some short form. We can take some of your, your videos and embed them. So you write a little bit, but then the embedded video works and uh, we can do all kind of stuff and, and leverage some of what you've already done as well and uh, cool, give cool. you another distribution platform here. So that, that'll be cool. Um, Mitch, you have anything coming? Nope. Okay, you will. Uh, I think uh, you're on my you're on my list for the uh, uh, Beretta stuff. So I'm on the bad list. I, I got it. I got it. Yeah, the Beretta list, um, which is good this time. You know, back back <laughs> before I come to grips with my disdain for for Beretta and the M9. Um, you know, I didn't look on them as positively, but 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 I'm coming around. I'm accepting that that's probably. It was me, not you, right? I think that that's where we are. Um, it's usually so the case. From, I yeah, with me it is. So, um, so from my trip before I went to Florida, I went and did. Oh, so let me let me get my mic out of the way for a sec and show off my new shirt here that I made. Uh, so this is my Total Joyrider and Gear Report shirt with uh, Joyrider TV on one side and Gear Report on the other, and the same stuff on the back. That is for, uh, and it's a long sleeve white kind of synthetic shirt. So this is my uh, sailing shirt for when I'm filming for Joyrider TV. Um, so I went to a uh, sailing club here in North Carolina uh, before I went to Florida and uh, did some filming while they were doing a race. So I'm going to go back here uh, in a week or three and uh, maybe do some racing there. Um, and then in Florida, I drove across the state to, uh, I think, I think TJ and his son told me it was Dunedin and the local people said something like Dunedin. It's a little, uh, like a little causeway near Clearwater above Tampa. Absolutely gorgeous. And I, I hooked up with, uh, uh, a couple guys and went sailing out in the Gulf of Mexico before coming back. Um, and I also hooked up with two different people on that trip to do some filming for, so, so the Joyrider TV stuff, you can go find it on, uh, on Joseph Bennett's, uh, total Joyrider channel on YouTube. And, uh, I may, I may edit down for one of his shows, um, for, for his show us your cat weekly show, uh, the, the ride I took in Tampa. Uh, but then I'll do a longer version on gear report. Uh, to go into a little bit more detail for that and for the uh, for the Waccamaw Sailing Club. Uh, so I'll do both of those. And uh, I may do some content on some of the Hobie cats I'm refurbishing for the Sea Scouts. Uh, but then I did two Humvees that I filmed for the Show Us Your Humvee. Uh, I'm not even calling it a weekly show anymore. For the, I'm just saying for the next episode. I've been too busy. I had two Humvees sitting in the queue and I wanted three for each show. So I've got one more to finish that show and I'm started on the next episode. Uh, I just need one or two, I think one more and I'll be able to get that next episode out. So as soon as I have time to do some video editing, I'm going to get those done. I'm still kicking out some of these uh, short form reviews. Uh, so who knows what's coming for me? Kind of just depends on what I feel like. All right. We're down to one person watching. So anything else anyone wants to talk about before we wrap this up? Run it in the brain. I would like to know. <laughs> I would like to know who that one person is. <laughs> yeah. I kind of like Leave a comment. Too. I'm curious. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is bugging me. I keep looking at my, my image here. I think I got my, uh, so, so I got the shirt and the, um, what do they call it? Heat transfer vinyl uh, from Amazon. And, and I've got a vinyl cutter that I got from Amazon too. So I did this all myself. And I believe I have this a little crooked. Like it's sitting about like that. And I have to keep tugging on it to get it straight. So I'm going to have to do better for the next one I make. I'm not Your hunch is pulling the shirt over. What's that? Your hunch is pulling the shirt over. One it is, side. Yeah. yeah. You know, you know. It's funny you say that, but um, 
one of my shoulder surgeries. I've had, I've had uh, two on this one and one on this one. I think it was this side. They were supposed to just do some labor repair while they were in there. And I wake up and it hurt like a mother. Like I have had, I've had five knee surgeries. And at that point I'd had one shoulder. That was my second shoulder. Um, so I'd been through a lot of these surgeries and I knew what to expect when I woke up and I woke up and was like, Oh my God, this hurts way more than anything else. And he's like, yeah, you know, we did some measuring while we were in there and uh, we lopped a half inch off the end of your collarbone because it was a little too long. Like you did what? Like they, they just took us all in there and started going at it. It's like, you gotta be kidding me. I'd like to so, have seen this conversation. The doctor said they're going, he's like, you know, this just this is this is fixed this. This is just all wrong. It's messed up. You know, we're just gonna shave it off a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I imagine they stuck something like a little Dremel or, or something and with a with a little cutoff wheel and just right through the end of it. I bet that's I exactly know. what it was. I bet it was a Dremel that they used. Cool. Yeah. And man was it painful. And and unfortunately, one thing I've learned through all these surgeries is the the main painkillers they like to give you when you're waking up from a surgery um, make me nauseous. Like I will projectile vomit everywhere. And I was like, just give it to me. And they, they'd give me the shot and, you know, two minutes later, or the pills and two, three minutes later, as soon as it starts dissolving, I'm like, I, nope, I'm just going to hold it down enough that I get a little bit off of it and then blah, all over. Okay, hit me again. <laughs> like, if you give me four doses and I get a quarter of a dose each time before I puke it up, pretty soon I'm going to have had a full dose and I won't be in so much pain. But uh, yeah, it, you don't have to worry about me getting hooked on painkillers because they make me puke all over the place. And uh, yeah, that, that ain't going to happen. I, I took them as long as I absolutely had to and then no more. Yep. All right. Well, with that, unless anyone else has something, why you keep looking at me like that, TJ? You keep looking up at me, like, dude, really? I was, I was getting a refill. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, Mama San's there. I got gotcha. you. All right. So, um, barring anyone else having anything to talk about, why don't we shut her down and we can all go do our Friday night thing? Whatever that is. I think for me, it's probably going to be installing another light fixture because that's what I was doing before this. And that's not a euphemism, unfortunately. I wish it were because uh, I don't even know what it would mean, but it's got to be more interesting than literally installing a light fixture. It's going to continue consuming. I don't know if I would want to know whatever that is a euphemism for, because that sounds complicated. It does. It's shocking. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, uh, we are down to zero viewers. I think that is a sign that it's time to wrap up. So everyone, thank you so much. Uh, why don't we run around the horn real quick and we'll do clockwise. So, uh, I'm not going to hand it off. All right. So Clover, Mitch, TJ, Stanley, say your parting words and we'll get out of here. I got this for everybody that uh, might be watching live because numbers lie sometimes. Or if you're watching in replay, thanks for checking out the week at Gear Report. Uh, pretty good one. So join us every Friday for that. Also, check out the uh, Gear Report Patreon page as well. Uh, over there um, on. Uh, yeah, definitely. And uh, you can find me, CloverTech.com, of course, or the uh, gear report articles on gear dash report.com. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. Hand over to you, TJ. Gear report.com. Check it out. <laughs> Gentlemen, it has been an absolute pleasure. I want to thank you very much for having me. If anybody's interested in checking me out on social media, you can see me on uh, YouTube at Stanley Orchard. And then every other platform, social media is at Orchard Stanley, except uh, Facebook. We don't do that. Otherwise, love to see you guys. And uh, gentlemen, again, thank you very much for having me. Awesome. Thank you. And with that, uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap up. I believe uh, I believe the momentum is that we're, we're going to keep doing this. So 
Uh, I apologize for getting this one uh, with, with the invitation updated and out uh, on the late side today. I will, uh, within the next few days, I'll go in and book them out for the next month or so. And we'll just continue doing this until we don't feel like doing it anymore. So um, until next time, where's the camera? There it is. Until next time, we'll see you at the range.